How are you doing guys? Today I'm going to show you seven insane transition techniques that are going to take your music from sounding boring and amateur and, well, dull, smoothly into sounding amazing and professional, full of energy, because most of us can get a 8 or 16 bar loop and it sounds great, but then we need to build that into a full track and you can click there for my video on how to arrange music, but when you've got the different sections of the track, like your verse, your breaks, your build-ups, your drops and choruses, getting those to transition smoothly together is super important. I'm Will from EDM Tips and over the last six years I've helped thousands of bedroom music producers just like you get their music to a professional level so they can get signed and released on some of the world's biggest labels. So using these seven transition techniques we are going to take a track that sounds like this. let's be honest is pretty cool but we want to add more interest more vibrancy to make it even more epic and we're going to end up today with a track that sounds more like this it's pretty simple once you get your head around a few key concepts and you're going to be able to understand and implement it in your own music too if you want more tips and tricks on professional music production you can check out my free training below or you can click on my link for the accelerator where we help our students get to a professional level as quickly as possible and release on some of the world's biggest labels okay let's hit these seven transition techniques and without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done oh yeah and if you like it please like subscribe and check me out over on Instagram. Now quickly, before we get started, it's worth noting that transitions are super important for any genre of music, but you wanna use the right transition effects that are gonna suit your style of music, and more importantly, suit the vibe of your music. Now the easiest way to do that is to listen to reference tracks in your genre to get some direction, and again, I'll put a link to a video on referencing there as well. So let's jump into this first transition technique, and this is reverse percussion. So here we've got our build. And again, this transition could be anywhere in the track, but we're going for the build to the drop here. So let's add some reverse percussion, which is just gonna smooth things out a tiny bit and give it more of an epic feel. So the first thing we need to do is find a, a drum sound that is actually gonna be the main impact, and then we're gonna reverse it. So let's find a big snare. In fact, let's go to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, and you can get that below this video. That's quite a... Uh, Epic one. So let's just put this in where we want our snare hit to be. So a nice big crash, and what we can actually do is add some reverb to that as well, uh, which I'm just gonna do on the channel itself, just for speed. So kind of like the Pride of Snare idea. And what we're going to do is just have a reverse version of this as well. But I want to make things a bit more interesting than just reversing it. So what I'll do is I'll copy it to a new channel. I will reverse it, like so. But I actually want to make it sound like it's from a bit of a different space as well. And that's going to make things just a little bit more interesting texturally. I'm actually going to take off the initial transient where the snare hits. So it's just the tail. So at the moment, it sounds like this, which is the standard sound. Let's just solo that. So you've got this reverse technique. And what I want to do to make this a little bit more interesting is I'm just going to add this free plugin from Ozone, the Imager 2, and I'm just going to spread it out really wide. And that's just so we've got a bit of a different texture when it comes to the reverse snare to the forward snare. So now it's like this. And that just makes things a little bit more interesting in the ears. So let's have a listen now. Cool, so that was a quick one. Let's go on to transition tip number two, which is using risers. Now, if you're making dance music, this is quite common, but even if you're making pop music, it's still useful to have some kind of instrument that's rising in pitch, which is gonna build the tension so that when you change into the next section of the track, we know it's coming, and there's a little bit of tension and release when we actually get to that next section. So in this, I've just created a shepherd tone, which is a very specific kind of riser, and I can show you how to do that. If you want, just let me know in the comments if you want me to do a shepherd tone tutorial, but in a nutshell, it's just a tone that continually rises. Now let's listen to that in the mix. You can hear it's just bringing up that energy. The 
which will take us up just before the drop. And you can use much shorter rises as well if you're just going from a verse to a chorus, for instance. So that's the effect, but let's just give an example of a shorter riser that you might also add. And you can layer risers as well. You know, that's a pretty important thing to do. Um, so let's go to sample, effect sweeps, sweeps up. Like that would be another riser. So we could just use a little bit of it and then fade it in with the volume. And what I would actually do in this situation is have it end on that snare hit. And then that's just going to give it a nice pause before we drop. But again, it depends on your genre and which part of the track that you are producing. Now, what I'm actually going to do now is warp this. So I'm going to choose Complex Pro so I can stretch it out and just make it a little bit longer. And then I'm fading it in with a clip fade here for the volume. And we're just going to bring this in quietly to layer onto our shepherd tone. So I'm actually going to stretch it a little bit longer. That actually drops down a little bit just before the before the break, so I'll tweak it. Okay, on to the third transition technique, which is something you may have heard of, and that is reverse reverb. But this is going to be boss level reverse reverb, and you probably haven't seen this before, unless you've joined my accelerator, in which case you would have seen it before. So reverse reverb is a way to introduce something before it actually happens. And that can get people ready, it can tell them that this is about to happen, and it can introduce the tonality of whatever instrument you're doing the reverse reverb for. Now, the most common is to do it with lead vocals, but you can also do it with lead synths as well. I'm going to show you how to do it on a vocal, just because that's what this track has. It has a, a lead vocal. So this is the vocal, and it comes in on the drop, or the chorus, if you will. Don't want to fall into your arms again and you can see my vocal processing there. If you want me to make a video on vocal processing again, just let me know in the comments below. So we want to introduce this vocal more smoothly. The way I'm going to do that is create a new audio track like so. What I'm going to do is take just a little bit of this vocal, probably the first syllable. Just the don't. Just copy it, paste it. Maybe a bit longer. It's usually better to do it when there's an actual note playing. So the D is a, it doesn't really have a tone, but the O of don't does. So let's just take it to this. So now we've actually got a note. Oh, oh, and that's what we're going to use. Next thing to do is consolidate that. Now we reverse it like so. And now we want to add a reverb to that. You can use any reverb really, but I'm just going to use the Ableton stock reverb for speed. And then let's give it a nice long reverb time. Now I'm going to show you how to make a boss level reverse reverb. Don't worry, it's still the same technique, but we're going to add a couple more effects to this. So I'm going to add an echo as well. I'll add this before the reverb actually. So it's going to bounce left and right. So I'll switch it to notes. One quarter, ping pong. Open up the filter and make sure we've still got lots of nice high end. Add some feedback. I might make it faster actually, maybe one eight. Smooth it out a bit with the reverb. Okay, now we need to record that. So again, I'm going to create another audio track. I'm going to take the input from this one. Let's just call this um, Vox Input. And let's just call it Vox Reverb at the moment. So 
So we need to select that as the input. Box reverb. Arm the track. So we're recording. And I think we'll probably need to. Oh no, it's still going in anyway. And then we can just record this hit with nothing else playing. All the way until that reverb and delay dies out. Perfect. Now what we have to do is the clever bit. So we can reverse this sound and it's going to give us a really cool sweep that is going to lead perfectly into those vocals. So we need to clip the first bit out, the first noise. So this first transient here, because we only really want the actual reverb and delay tail, not the initial sound that we took it from. So now if we delete this Vox Reverb track, we've got our Reverse Reverb here. Let's call that Reverse Reverb. And we are now going to listen to that, and then we'll listen to it in the mix. So this is what we've got at the moment. It's not quite boss level yet, but it will be soon. So listen how it moves into the vocals. Now you can fade it out slightly so it's more of a smooth crossfade between this reverse sound and this. But when you've got a long tail like this, you can decide how long it is just by moving the clip in length and then using a clip fade to tweak it to taste. So you can have it shorter if you like, like this. Or we could even take out some of the very prominent delay effects. And now let's try it. So now let's make this boss level. This is where you can apply extra effects to it. So we could add a little bit of reverb on there. Smooth it down. We can also, and this is the thing I really, really love, is put an auto pan on there. And then what we're going to do is just feed in a bit of panning. And then what we can do is automate the rate of this auto panner so it gets faster just at the end of that. And then you get this kind of spin up effect. So let's just make it a bit smoother, like so. So this is our boss level reverse reverb. Let's make it a bit longer and then listen to it in the mix. And you'll hear how it smooths in the transition. And as I said, you can do that for lead synths, pretty much anything with a tone that you want to introduce beforehand. Okay, on to the next four super powerful transition techniques. But before we do that, let me know if you're enjoying this video so far. And let me know what video do you want me to make next on this channel. Let me know in the comments. And if you're enjoying it, give me a hell yeah. Or an amen, brother. If you're feeling holy. Okay, let's get on to transition technique number four. And that is the spatial washout. Now what this is, is a technique to take away some of the transient energy when you are transitioning from one part of the track into another, which again is gonna create more contrast between those two parts of the track. Now, something I love to add this to is drums, but you can, again, pretty much add it to anything and even the whole mix if you want to. I'm gonna show you how to do this on drums and let's have a look. So these are our drums leading up to the drop. And then we pause and you get a couple more drums come in on the new part of the track, which is fine. Now to illustrate this, let's just take these drums all the way along uh, because it's gonna more pronounce what I'm trying to do here. Now the most common way to add a, a washout, a spatial washout, is to actually use a reverb. Now it's important to use the reverb on the channel itself because if you use the reverb on an auxiliary channel, that's not gonna take away the transient energy. All that's gonna do is keep the dry signal, and then add reverb on the auxiliary channel. We actually want to take away the transient energy. So I put a reverb on the track. It's 100% dry at the moment. And I've put up the volume of the diffuse and reflect just so that it's 
pretty comparable in volume when you've got the, the reverb washout. And then I'm going to automate this dry wet control just to turn on as we get nearer to that transition point. And then I'm making sure that it goes back to zero when we actually hit the new part of the track so we've got that full transient energy. So now let's have a listen to our drums. Now we've got this reverb washout on it. So what we're doing is just taking away that transient energy which makes the contrast bigger. So let's listen to it in the mix with everything else. Quite subtle, but the addition of all of these subtle effects can have a massive impact on the contrast when you're transitioning from point to point in your track. Okay, on to transition technique number five, and that is the pitch bend. Something else that you can use with drums, but pretty much any instrument. The riser is a way of using pitch bend, but what I'm gonna do is create another track for the drums, and I'm gonna call this snare roll. And again, you can do this either in a very short space, if you're just going from one point of the track to another, or if you're in a big epic place like this build up into the drop, then of course you can prolong it and make it longer. So I'm just gonna load in a normal simpler in Ableton, but it doesn't matter which sampler you're using really. And then we need to load in a snare. Again, I'll go to the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. I'll just use this short sharp snare. And then we are gonna program this in on every 16th in a classic dance music kind of build up. So we can do this. And you don't have to use this pattern, you could do any pattern. But the point we're trying to do here is to, yeah, to add a, add a pitch bend to it. Now what I'm gonna do is also make this increase in volume over time. So I'm just drawing in a volume sweep as well with velocity. So it's gonna increase in volume. But let's add uh, some pitch bend to that as well. Now you can either draw a drum on each separate note, like going up like this. What I like to do is add a bit more of a smooth transition. So if we change this to a sampler, we can control the amount of pitch bend, the pitch bend range. So I'm gonna put this to 12, which is one octave. And I'm just gonna program in a pitch bend here. So if we just choose automation, MIDI control, pitch bend, and now just draw in our pitch bend going, well, we can keep it on zero and then just pitch bend up nearer the end near the point of transition, like so. And now listen to the snare when we get to the end of this transition. It goes up. Now, as I said, you can use this in small ways as well. So for instance, if we have a small transition here, um, let's just copy this part of it and program in a different snare pattern for this. Let's go back to notes, get rid of velocity. So it's a much shorter drum intro. Let's take the pitch bend. So it's just going from down to up. And then you've got this small little transition effect halfway through this part of the track. So a little bit of ear candy that really adds something to the track. Now, before we move on from pitch bend, I just wanna show that you can actually apply this to instruments, not just drums and risers as well. So we've got our bass. So it's not gonna work for every track and every genre, but just another tip that you can use here. If we go into the clip and we choose envelope, MIDI control, pitch bend, let's just pitch bend up the bass as well. Now, much like the sampler, you have to make sure that you've got the correct 
um, or the desired rather than correct uh, pitch bend range selected. So I've got two serum layers in this base. I'm just going to go in and make sure that we've got 12 semitones up selected. And I'll do that for the second layer as well. Otherwise, they're going to go out of tune. 12 semitones up. And that means when we pitch bend from zero up to the max, it's going to be one entire octave that the pitch bend is doing. So now let's have a listen to it with the pitch bend on the musical element, not just the drums. Listen to the bass now. As I said, not necessarily going to work for every track, but a little extra tip that you've got for you there. Okay, on to the next transition tip, and that is filter automation. This is where you simply take some of the frequencies out as you reach your transition. Yeah, you take some of the frequencies out. You can either take up the low end or the high end or both. So we can see here on our bass bus, I've just got a simple EQ. If we turn that on and have a look at the automation, all I've done is automated a little bit of that frequency being taken out. So watch this frequency range here. You can see it automated in. Just taking out that low end energy. So it can come back full power on the drop. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a big transition or a little transition. We could do that with our kick drum here as well. So let's just put in a little kick drum fill. We can take out the low end energy of that kick drum just very quickly in exactly the same way. So let's just add an EQ there, go filter, and we're just going to take it out and then drop it back in like so. Just to take out the low end energy from the kick. Go on its own. Another great way to add just a little bit of interest in your transitions. And if you were to add in a reverse kick to this as well, you're going to be combining, well, point one and this point as well. So you've got the reverse percussion and the filter automation. So let's just see if we can do that quickly. Okay, I'm going to have to add another track for the kick. That's will kick one. So let's go to my favorites. Kicks, will kick one. So it's going to be the same kick, although you could choose a different kick. I'm just going to reverse it. And then it's going to lead in to that next kick, like so. I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter. And now let's have a listen to this. Whoops. Take it down in volume. So we've got now a reverse kick. You have to make sure that it ends just before that another kick. You're going to get a transient build up, which is going to cause clipping. So now let's have a listen to it with the filter automation and the reverse kick. Just adding that little extra bit of interest, movement and groove to the track. Okay, on to the final and potentially most important of my transition ticks. Sorry, mum. Transition tips, and that is to use the composition itself. So this is where you can hint to perhaps the main hook of your track before it happens in a similar way to the reverse reverb did. And again, you can do this melodically. So if we were to have our main melody, which we do, and it sounds like this. And that happens on the chorus or in the chorus. So let's have a listen. Let's make it a bit louder so we can hear what's going on. Let's try and introduce that beforehand in the build up. Um, so let's have a listen. We're not going to play the whole melody, but we're just going to hint at it 
and then bring it in. And this is very popular in pop music in particular because it gets people used to what's coming. I'm actually going to bring the whole thing in. You might just use a little repeating bit of it. But what I'm going to do is just push this right back in the mix using a reverb on the channel itself. Very short decay time, and that's just to make this a lot more subtle. Let's just add an EQ as well. Take out the low end. Again, to create the more of a contrast between the build up or the transition point and the drop itself. I'm also going to add an auto filter, which is harking back to my last tip. So you can combine these all together and it's going to sound great. So we're just going to take out the high ends. And it's just going to introduce it gently. And you have to make sure you turn these effects off, of course, when you hit that point where you want the song to transition. So we can do that just by grouping them together and then turning it off there. Now let's hear what it sounds like in the mix. I'm just going to put an auto pan on this as well to add some more movement and interest. Now let's listen to our build up. So it's very subtle. But people all... It's just hinting very delicately at what's to come. Now, to add to that, we are also going to do the same with the vocal. So, we've already got the reverse reverb, but again, you can layer all of these techniques together to get the most ultimate of awesome transitions. So, we're just going to have this don't want to. And we're just going to introduce this very... So what I'm going to do is add, again, a filter on this. So we're just going to use an auto filter, bring in the high frequencies over time. I'm also going to add a delay on this. So let's use the echo. And again, just get the timing right for how you want. Probably one, two. Ping pong left and right. And again, you can use that at any point, but it's very popular in pop is to hint at the hook before it happens, just so people subconsciously get programmed that that is what's coming in the track. Well, there you go, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget, you can check out my free training below this video, or if you want some more advanced coaching, you want one-on-one -on -one calls, you basically want to get your music to a professional level as quickly as possible so you can get signed and released on some of the world's biggest labels like our other students. Do check out my Accelerator program below this video and thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, share, subscribe, all of that stuff and I'll catch you next time. Until then, cheers and happy producing.